Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is April 11, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. This Friday, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson became the first Black woman confirmed to the Supreme Court. Celebrations appeared all around the world as a historic moment indicated a step forward in the history of race in the United States. The Senate confirmed Jackson to the high court in a 53 to 47 vote. The conservative leaning Senate had three Republicans join all Democrats in support of Judge Katanji's nomination. The 51 year old federal judge will replace Justice Stephen Breyer when he retires at the end of the current term. Jackson previously clerked for Breyer, who has served as an associate justice for nearly 28 years. Former First Lady Michelle Obama spoke for all of us when she posted a tribute to Judge Katanji on her Instagram. She wrote, thank you Justice Katanji for giving black girls and women everywhere, including my daughters, a new dream to dream, a new path to forge and a future we can all be hopeful for. Congratulations, Justice Katanji. The future is female. Equality is coming. Get ready. In other news, 26-year-old Lizelle Herrera was arrested for murder this past Thursday by the Starr County Sheriff's Office in Texas because they believe she initiated a self-induced abortion. She was held in custody on $500,000 bond before an abortion rights advocacy fund posted bail on her behalf and then she was released this Saturday. During her detainment, human rights activists and legal professionals were confused about what happened. Apparently, a local Texas hospital reported Lizelle to the police after they determined that she had taken steps to terminate her own pregnancy. The indictment signed on March 30th, 2022 stated that Lizelle did then and there intentionally and knowingly cause the death of an individual by a self-induced abortion. Charges were then dismissed by District Attorney Gocha Allen Ramirez, who said that after reviewing applicable Texas law, Lizelle cannot be prosecuted for the allegation. According to a professor at the University of Texas School of Law, the murder charge didn't make sense because the Texas murder statute does apply to the killing of an unborn fetus, but it specifically exempts cases where the person who terminated the fetus is the pregnant woman. The most common self-induced abortion method is ingesting a combination of mifepristone and misoprostol. Both drugs are available from a prescription from a healthcare provider, from pharmacies, and from the internet. As of 2019, there are seven states with laws directly criminalizing self-induced abortion, 11 states with laws criminalizing harm to fetuses that lack adequate exemptions for the pregnant woman, and 15 states with criminal abortion laws that could be applied to women who self-induce an abortion. Both the National Lawyers Guild and the American Medical Association passed resolutions condemning the criminalization of self-induced abortion. Well, why would a woman want to self-induce an abortion? That's her business. In other news, have you heard of Farhan, also known as Turtle Nikimo, the popular Instagrammer and TikTok creator who gained quite a following by talking about feminism and toxic masculinity? Let's listen to one of his videos. If you're a man who claims you only value women because they are someone's mother, sister, daughter or wife, you don't actually value women. You value the role they are assigned to serve men. Wow, that was an insightful point. A man who creates content that delves into the heart of toxic masculinity should be celebrated by everyone. But wait, what's this? If you value women because they're someone's mother, wife, sister, daughter, then you don't value women. You value the roles they're assigned to serve men. Is that deja vu? Wait, what? It has come to my attention that this famous male feminist who has earned his reputation for his striking insight into feminism is actually a fraud. 
Farad is creating videos that are exact replicas of the content created by feminist poet, author, and Instagrammer Farida D. Farida D wrote in an Instagram story that a follower recognized her original writing in Farad's Instagram reels and alerted her to the plagiarism. Farida says she immediately contacted him through Messenger and demanded that he give her credit for the ideas he stole. He quickly turned his Instagram page to private. I asked Farida how she felt in a DM message and she shared her sentiments. She wrote, I feel broken and violated by this man who stole my words and other women's to build his platform. And I feel like the world has given him fame and glory for breaking and violating us. This man has more than 280,000 followers on TikTok and 91,000 followers on Instagram, yet he has built his brand by stealing ideas from women. How many women in history have stood by as men grabbed the credit for their hard work and there was nothing they could do about it? Farida hopes that all women who support her work will unfollow him and report his pages. What do I think we should do? I think we should take it a step further and promote his work for him by posting his picture in a special hashtag. Hashtag male feminist fraud. Visit my Instagram at the feisty news to screenshot the photo and tag me when you do. You want to be a household name for Rod? We'll make sure of it. Enjoy. Oh, it's time for a break. How can those sweet little weed gummies be deadly? What do you do if a woman you care about is in an abusive relationship? Details coming up right after the break. Don't miss it. My heart for homemaking flows through my hands into each knot of my work. My name is Natalie and I'm the owner and maker of Fringe and Free. I started my business because I wanted more home decor handmade with natural elements. My style is earthy, minimal, and warm. I want to express life, peace, and joy. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? A 23-year-old woman has died after eating what she thought was just a harmless cannabis sweet. Dummy Lola Olakani, a law student living in London, bought the gummies through a messaging app. She and a friend both ate the gummies and immediately complained of feeling sick. Both women were taken to the hospital and Dummy Lola died a few days later. That's very tragic. I live in New Orleans and goodness knows I've sampled some weed gummies while hanging out in the French Quarter. I never thought it could be a matter of life and death. I mean, it's only cannabis. How could this happen? Let's talk to our resident toxicology expert, Dr. Kelly Johnson Arbor, a co-director for the Poison Control Center in Washington, DC. Thanks for so much for joining us again, Dr. Kelly. Please help me understand, how could this happen? It's just marijuana. All right, Tierica, this story is crazy, but this is something that we all need to be aware of. So first of all, cannabis is usually not that harmful. It doesn't usually make people die. But in this case, these, these women bought it off of a messaging app. And when you buy drugs from strangers or especially online, you have no idea what you're getting. So this, the, the gummies that these ladies ate may have not been just straight up cannabis. They may have been synthetic cannabinoids or maybe even something more dangerous. It could have been fentanyl for all we know. So the moral of the story here is when you buy drugs online or buy drugs from anyone, you have to be very, very careful. There is no quality control and you never know what you're getting and it could be very dangerous. Oh, you're right. Just because it's packaged and sold as a specific type of product doesn't mean that it's what you'll get. Thank you, Dr. Kelly, for straightening that out for us. Man. In other news, in a viral dilemma posted to the ethicist in the New York Times, a woman writes in to share that she noticed that a family member is in an abusive relationship. She writes, my brother-in-law has been dating his partner longer than my husband and I have been together. They've stayed together through many trials, job changes, and relocations, but he does not seem that interested in her. He constantly tells her that she's not making enough money, and she even abandoned her dream job in favor of a more lucrative one. Over the holidays, she expressed a desire to try to get into the same field as me, which makes me think that my brother-in-law is making unfair comparisons. 
My mother-in-law and I have discussed the various ways in which he treats her unkindly. Last year, my brother-in-law and his partner came to visit over the holidays and he was very rude to her on many occasions. I spent several hours talking to her and trying to make her feel better about the situation. While we've told her multiple times that he treats her unkindly, she doesn't want to seem to acknowledge the abuse. She's concerned that she would lose all the family she has. And I understand this. Having been in an emotionally abusive relationship myself, I know it's incredibly hard to get out of. But at what point do I continue to support her while telling her she needs to get out? And at what point do I stop being supportive? What do I think? It is emotionally tough to watch a friend stay in an abusive relationship that's hurting them. Even if you give them a million reasons why the man doesn't deserve them, or even if you tell them that you will help them leave, they stay. And you realize they won't leave until they're fed up and had enough. Can you be a friend to someone who is constantly expressing pain over a relationship that they can't seem to let go of, even though they're always sad and you know they deserve better? I couldn't. That type of relationship would drain me and I know my limits and that's okay. But I do know other women who've been gifted with the type of patience women in abusive relationships need. If that's not you, that's okay. Instead of asking, at what point do you stop being supportive? Instead ask, how else can I support? If it's too much to listen to how much she's being hurt by this man, if it's too much to watch him disrespect her in front of you, if it's so hard that you begin to feel like you are the one that's powerless in the situation, then there's only one thing you can do. Talk to him. Why is it that the burden of ending an abusive relationship lies solely on the person who's being hurt? If you can see that he's hurting her and disrespecting her, then why does no one talk to him? Why can't you go up to him and say, you're hurting her and abusing her and we see it and it's wrong? One time I read a story about a woman who was in an abusive relationship where her partner demanded that she work and was openly aggressive to her physically and verbally in a culture where this type of thing was forbidden. She told her mutual friends about the abuse and they all sat down together and confronted the issue openly and respectfully with him. Of course he was upset that she told their friends, but he never did it again. Maybe he needs to know that the, the abuse is not a secret. Your frustration with the victim is not going to fix the problem unless you involve the source of the abuse. We have so many resources for survivors of abuse to help them heal from the trauma that they may never heal completely, but no one is working with the abusers to find out why they do it and at the very least to ask them to stop and then teach them how to stop. If your friend is in an emotionally abusive relationship, you have to find someone he respects and have them ask him to stop. No matter how much he tries to explain that she deserves it, she doesn't. And maybe he doesn't get that because he doesn't know. Maybe he was treated the same way for his entire life, openly criticized for everything he did, verbally abused and neglected, and then he turned around and did the same thing because he didn't know there was any other way to show love. Maybe he believes he's motivating her with his criticism because that's how his family motivated him. Maybe no one ever told him that is not how you love a woman. You saw the problem for yourself. Instead of becoming more frustrated by listening to her cry, grab a trusted friend and talk to him. I think there's some work for me to do in this situation. You know what? I'll give it a try. Let's see what happens. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. 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 Welcome to the Feisty. 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 Welcome.